Good afternoon and welcome to uh, our latest uh, live uh, question and answer session um, at B2B Council. My, my name is Drew Mellor and I'm the leader of B2B Council. Uh, really pleased to be uh, to be with you today um, and as we are every two weeks to, to, to take questions across a variety of our platforms. So whether that um, was originally just Facebook, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, so whichever way you want to interact with us, please do. Um, there's a uh, comment function on, on each of the platforms. So if you uh, send any comments or questions you've, hit, you've, you've got in, I'll try and get to them as best as I can in the next in the next 30 minutes. Um, this isn't one of our theme sessions where we pick a particular topic and, and deep dive on it. This is a, a general session. So absolutely anything you would like to ask um, me in, in relation to you know, the, the activities of B2B Council, be delighted to, to get to. So um, before I um, before I go into, into that, probably just quite um, there's two, a couple of main things I just wanted to uh, up, update on. Uh, first is the uh, situation in Ukraine. Um, and we've had um, some we've been overwhelmed by um, some of the officers of support from from local residents. So it's amazing how the community's really come forward on that basis. Over 100 um, uh, people are, uh, have come forward as sponsors as well, which is which is great. We've got a um, uh, effective frequently answered questions um, uh, page, which we're going to send up as a banner. Um, uh, brilliant. Thank you very much, guys, uh, for that. So any questions you've got about that, uh, you, you, our, our help for Ukraine, please, please go there. Um, as a general point, one thing we're really keen on now, um, we've, we've put an appeal out for businesses um, who want to offer employment. And we've had some that's already, already come back, um, but it'd be fantastic if we could have a bit more a wider and deeper um, uh, a bunch of businesses that want to come back and support and offer offer employment. So hopefully that's uh, that, that's something we'd lo we'd love to hear from you on. And, uh, and and secondly, we've had a massive amount, and quite understand, great news in terms of you know the government bringing forward a hundred and fifty pound uh, rebate, council tax rebate. Um, we all know that the cost of living at the moment is 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 really you know a push with you know very high rec um, levels of inflation. Um, so we, we are going to be getting a uh, 150 pound rebate across uh, across council tax. Um, that that needs to be delivered by September. We're working um, you know uh, absolutely you know flat out our teams internally working at how we can actually um, move move that forward quick, quicker than September, and we certainly intend to. It has it has it's equivalent effectively to doing a whole new bill round. Um, which is an, an immense uh, annual exercise, and it's happening at the same time as as that bill exercise. So we do it, we do everything we can to bring that well forward from uh, in, in front of September. Um, and there is, you can see now the um, the energy rebate um, uh, line. There said bcpcouncil.gov.uk forward slash energy rebate. Um, okay, great. Let's let's kick in some questions, and I'll have a look now to see uh, to see what what we can uh, what we can pick up. A number of questions already coming in, so so thank you everybody, every everybody for that. Um, okay, so uh, I've got a question from Elizabeth Ramsey about 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 toilets. Um, uh, I, I'm not specifically sure in terms of uh, the, the detail on um, Port um, uh, Port Marvine, uh, Elizabeth. I will get on. I will get on to that uh, and see if we can come back to you uh, if, if there's a temporary issue. We are as a you know we've we just uh, installed two new toilets in in, in Hamworthy, um, so so we, we we've got quite a massive investment in our toilet program, and we're looking forward to bringing three new. Uh, toilets across uh, in in pool uh, in in the next uh, six months as trials of new types of toilets. So over and above what we've already done. So so Elizabeth, we are we are really up for um, bringing in provision there if, if, uh, on, on toilets. Um, if 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 you could email me, that'd be really really helpful at drew.mellow.gov.uk. Um, I will um, to come back specifically on on the um, Portman Ravine point. Yeah, a couple of questions on council tax rebate. I've gone into that. I might come back to that a bit later on, um, but I've, I've literally just, uh, um, uh, yeah, come back to that later. Okay, so I've got a question from from Susan Lennon in terms of our councillors now able to represent two different areas. Is is this ethical? Um, yeah, Susan, I know the things you're referring to. So technically, what happens is a councillor gets um, uh, uh, elected for for a four year period, um, and and to be elected, you need to either live in um, the, the you know the, the area like BCP, Bournemouth, Christchurch, and Paul, uh, or you need to work work in working at the point of election. So um, our monitoring officer, our, our, our you know, or our um, chief exec um, would have gone through every one of the people who looked to stand in in uh, 2019, um, and uh, it's, so they're all applicable to stand in. If somebody moves away from from the area, then it's you know, or gets called away for work or other family commitments, then it's up to them what, what they what they do. So. Um, so effectively, none, none of our councillors I'm aware of are representing two different areas. Although I do know there is a, 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 an issue with one of our councillors who's 
um, effectively reunited with his wife through uh, his ex-wife through through the coronavirus pandemic and being her carer, and is now splitting time between between two walls, which I think is what you're referring to, uh, Susan. Um, okay, thank you. I hope that clarifies that. Um, uh, okay, uh, Danny Mills, this is a question at one o'clock, a uh, really interesting question. Thanks for coming in on YouTube. Uh, good. Uh, why does some bin crew take extra waste and some don't? I think this is, look, you know, we, we get really strong feedback for, from our from our bin crews, you know, how, how they, they try and help where they can. Um, we're quite, uh, you know, it isn't possible for, for a bin crew as a matter of policy to always take extra waste. Um, uh, so you know, it, it, it's something that we certainly do try and do if, if, if we can do. But it can't be it can't be a situation where everybody um, everybody's able to put out the extra waste all the time. Where we can, we will be flexible. Um, but but it, but not everybody can do it. What you can do, Danny, if it's a consistent issue, um, you can get you can get bigger bins. So if you've got certain size households, you can you can look to um, get bigger bins. What you can also do is you can you can buy um, uh, another bin, whether that's a recycling bin or, or or a black bin. So if you if you regularly need two bins, you can actually purchase that extra service. Um, but the, the teams you know do try and be flexible where they can. Um, so and and we, you know and I just actually commend you know anybody who, who knows anybody working in that um, in, environment have done a fantastic job um, and and have been you know really good uh, good advocates for what we're trying to do across the conurbation. Um, okay, yeah, again, um, another another question about council tax rebate, which looks, again, I'm, I will come back to that at the end of this, just to remind anybody joining on um, on on later. Okay, J Jade Elizabeth at 101, we've got a question about, um, uh, and thank you, Elizabeth, for just responding. It's only me an email I've just seen on the earlier point. Um, uh, so uh, Jade Elizabeth Marion Jones, uh, 101, um, uh, children's play area on Waller's Dam Rec. Uh, actually, uh, Jed, it's a really interesting, really interesting question. We, we just uh, had literally had a conversation as Cabinet this morning about a uh, effectively a children's play strategy. Um, we've, we, there have been investment across the conurbation in certain, in certain areas. And, you know, I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old, so active, active user of, uh, of, of children's play areas. You know, the, 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 the money that's gone into Paul Park particularly uh, has been great, although it's for some issues in terms of vandalism, which we really needed to address. I'll come to come to that in a second. So, so Jade, ultimately, what we're trying to do is now come across across the conurbation a whole strategy uh, around extra investment in children's play. I will personally note down uh, your point about what is down wreck. We will be doing a consultation. We will want people to come forward and say, you know, which of the facilities you would like to, um, you know, think need some some investment. A lot of the stock hasn't been invested in historically, um, and uh, and now we're saying actually it's a massively important thing. We need to create um, those community interactions, those opportunities for the children to have the best starts in life, uh, and more and more you know free access to um, to, to to facilities. So so Elizabeth, uh, sorry Jade, we absolutely agree with you. Uh, I'll, I'll specifically note down the point about what is down rec. Watch your space. Um, and one of the things we can be doing with our futures fund, which is 50 million pounds of infrastructure money we, we've brought in, um, is to invest in, in infrastructure. Um, and, uh, and, and as part of that, I'm looking to bring forward a, a children's play strategy um, uh, through, through my colleagues uh, shortly. So, so yes, is a simple answer. We're, we're going to try and do more on that. Um, yeah, thank you, Mal Malcolm Farrell, 103. It's not really a question, but it's a, but it's a, it's a really good point. Um, uh, we, we, and actually, we just actually had a, a this morning at Cabinet um, a paper around all the different houses um, that the house building we're doing. Um, so effectively, we're looking uh, to bring forward over 1,400, you know, uh, that was uh, approved and sanctioned at Cabinet this morning of, of new houses um, and, and social houses, which is really fundamental. So what I said in Cabinet this morning was it's all well and good coming in and, you know, sort of turbocharging the ambition to build more houses. We've done that. Um, but now it's about delivery. And the paper today was about delivering those extra 1,400 houses. We also had a separate paper that talks about our housing model. So how we deliver housing, you know, council housing services across the conurbation. Um, and that's about bringing together the best of um, a PHP and the, the Bournemouth model into a BCP homes. And in, interestingly in that, we, we don't have any uh, council houses in, in Christchurch because of the previous Christchurch uh, Borough Council or Dorset Council probably um, sold them off. Um, what we're now looking to do across the piece is to bring more council housing to bear. So, we, so we've tried to, we're really ramping up our investment in in teams and um, to, to effectively deliver more council housing and more housing uh, generally. And at Cabinet today, we, we approved 40, over 1,400 
in in the um, which is called the CNAS update. So thanks, Malcolm. That's that's help, helpful. Um, okay, let me have a look through. Okay, I've got a specific question about White Leg Way, which I don't have an answer to, Jez. So, but what I will do is the team will take that down, and and we'll and we'll come back to you if it's a specific a specific question about quite a um, you know a, a high curb. So it's quite a detailed point. Um, so I won't answer that publicly, but we'll we'll, we'll try and get an answer to you. Um, okay, so uh, we've got a question from Christine uh, Anson. Um, uh, Does my disability parking permit allow me to use all council car parks? In, in in bcp areas my my, under, my understanding is is is, um, is that it enables you to to park on uh, the disability parking permit enables you to park um certainly on the street what i'll do christine i'll try and get an answer to you for that during during the broadcast if we can if not we will come back to you otherwise i don't want to say something that yeah, i'm not absolutely sure on uh, it was a few years ago i was the portfolio holder for transport in pool um, so I did, I, I'll just check, I'll, I'll get that check now and then we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you. I'm just taking note of that, Christine. Give me one second. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, okay. Thanks for all the questions. Loads coming in. So really, really helpful. Okay. So we've got a, a question from John Vidello, uh, 106. We're very concerned that scaffolding to do the removal of cladding at Dolphin Keys, the key pool would attract from the aesthetic and enjoyment of the key and business in the area. Surely this could be done quickly and out of season the current schedule for uh is is, is may till march 23 yeah john I, I i absolutely get this point um i think i think i think it's you know really valid there's a we are there's an awful lot um uh going on on the key effectively and we, we're trying to we actually um brought forward in as part of our seafront strategy again at cabinet this morning um, one of the things that was highlighted was the developments, you know, uh, and investment on the key, both in terms of um, events, a huge amount of events going on. We're also looking to do a um, a, a Christmas event in Paul, which will be fo focused around the key, not dissimilar to the, the investment that gets into Bournemouth uh, and the really successful Bournemouth um, uh, Christmas Christmas events there. So, so we're doing a mass amount to try and animate the space. Um, it was a few festivals on the key last year. It's fantastic to see it full. It really feels like there's some amazing uh, businesses going into uh, the old town as well. You know, so you've got you know um, Musara rest uh, drunk going in. You've got Renew. You've got a lot. So there's real animation down there. You've got uh, you know a, a lot going on. What we what we need to try and do is to manage the, the, the all the works that's happening at, at the same time. So John, um, you know, we would be. This is, some of that's in our control, some of it's out of our control. What we, but what we are doing is bringing forward a huge amount. Um, and Steve Barron, who's our uh, portfolio holder for um, pool regeneration, is, is leading on all of that work. So, so John, you know, there is some disruption, you know, but we're doing a lot effectively. Um, and what we're not going to do is, is wait. We're going to make sure there's an awful lot of um, animation, investment going forward. Um, Future Places, our urban regeneration company, are bringing forward in the summer uh, their first wave of projects. Um, a part of that will be about talking about some of our plans for investment and uh, rejuvenation of the key. So a lot coming forward this sum summer, John, uh, both in terms of events and in and investment. And but I will, um, you know, where we can, we will try and minimise that disruption. Okay. Um, um, okay. So it's so Matthew Adams' uh, question about changing places, toilets. Um, we're one of a few councils not to appear to receive any. any uh, did we? Did we? Did we not apply? So, so we we actually we are we are increasing our provision in terms of changing places, toilets. We um, we gave as part of the um, uh, the, the bounce back funding effectively. Um, so I know, and I went and visited you know one in in, in a fantastic uh, disability focused you know hotel at Martian Court. Um, recently, so a new changing place toilet. So it, it, we we are you know we are doing more around uh, the changing places toilets. We are putting money into them, you know, and, and, and just give an example of one of them. Uh, and we want to do we want to do more. Uh, you know, M Matthew, if you think there's particular parts of the conurbation that, um, in 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 your experience, are, are you know there's, there's lack of provision, um, then we'd really like to hear from you, um, because we do we are doing more and we do want to do more. We've got a wider toilet strategy coming, you know. Uh, later and um, that's outside of the uh, the new toilets we're already putting into pool and the the ones we're reopening um because we're committed as administration to investing more in toilets it's outside of that we've got a wider strategy so any comments you've got about changing places um we we would really like to hear them so so matthew in the first instance come to me 
uh, drew.mellor at bcpcouncil.gov.uk if there are specific areas you think we need more but we are investing in more we have put money in, in, into more we've also put money into um, extra um, um, maintenance effectively and people so people can open the you know changing places toilets for for longer um, so, so hopefully we're starting to turn the tide on that it's certainly something we want to do and, and feel like we should be doing so thank you for the question Matthew um, okay so okay Lucy, Lucy Allen question from Lucy Allen uh, will there be an overarching master plan for the regeneration of Paul when are we like to see some visuals and ideas thanks yeah th thanks Lucy I, I did I did touch on it briefly in terms of the uh, the work that future places our urban regeneration company are, are doing on some of the key sites in, in Paul um, and some of that will be coming forward in in, in this summer what we're going to do uh, um, so, so, and, and effectively that that includes you know that the investment in the key um, we've got some major work going on uh, at the moment in terms of the, the town centre, the bus station uh, piece and, and the leisure centre. We, we're committed to providing a new uh, and improved leisure centre in Paul. Um, so we expect that to come forward soon. So what we're going to do is effectively bring forward a series of plans um, for, for, for individual areas like the town centre main piece there. Um, and, and, and I'm committed that we'll start to make some, some active delivery before 2023. Um, so which is the next election so that's that's what i've tasked the team to do i want spades in the ground in terms of um you know uh, leisure center provision and, and and you know what we're going to do in town center north and actively we've got a plan coming forward in june i, I believe it's june um but not in may overview and scrutiny um for um paul key through through uh, future places so so mouthful there um so we will you know we, we will we are bringing a lot forward in in paul and um, we've got a cabinet member uh, Steve Barron in, in responsible for it and driving it forward on a daily basis. Um, specifically, you asked, is it going to be a master plan for Paul? We, we, we're, we're actually looking to make sure we've got master plans for individual areas, but uh, by having a you know, genuinely world leading um, a future places team, we've got some of the best people knowing about regeneration in the country. Uh, there, um, they are you know, uh, effectively taking that forward in a um, you know in a concerted and thought through uh, thought through way. Lucy, so a lot more happening over the summer on that. Um, and, and I've committed personally that I want spades in the ground, um, you know, before before the election so people can actually, it's not talk, we don't want talk, you know, we, we need to get on and actually do some things. Um, we've had a, just started something called the Big Conversation, which is a Future Places team have, have led, which is a massive consultation exercise about what our region means and what specific areas mean, because anything we do is going to be absolutely grounded in in what the public want to see and do so um, and then we bring it forward so so hopefully lucy that answers some of your question so not an overarching pool master plan but specific um uh, plans in, in 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 dedicated areas and future places have the overarching remit to make sure all of that's put together and the next lot of that will come forward um in in uh, the, the early summer um, with some click decisions and that and money going into new investment Okay, Sally Rowe, um, really, really helpful question, interesting question, uh, timely as well. Um, 109, Sally uh, put this question, so I'm a few minutes behind, sorry, I'll try, I'll try to speed up. Um, Sally, thanks for your question about grass cutting. Um, last year, parts of the company flipped a mess. The grass is uh, growing long again now in places. Will you be grass cutting soon? Yes, is, is, is the answer. Uh, two things here, um, Sally. One, we are, we, have, we literally just started grass cutting, I think it was a, a week ago. Um, so that obviously that can't happen everywhere at the same time, but the, but we're back out now grass cutting. Uh, so so as a general point, yes, is the answer. I think that you you refer back to last year as well, and I think this is a really interesting point to uh, to, to talk about. So we so we have a uh, a commitment, you know, to to doing more around biodiversity and, and, and ecology, um, and we had a trial last summer um, where we let some verges grow and, and to enhance um, enhance biodiversity. Some places that look fantastic, you know, when we were able to plant and sow wild seeds and you had wild meadows, it just looked absolutely amazing. So it looks great. It adds to biodiversity, you know, fantastic. Some parts um, of some verges, you know, just collected litter, um, you know, it, it absolutely didn't help with, you know, dog fouling. Um, and so what I did last August was stopped in, in some parts of that trial early and said, look, come on, you know, let's have a bit, a little bit more intelligence about where we're actually going to do this. And, and also where it is worth doing, let's promote it. Let's say this is positively why we're doing it. But ultimately, we're not going to do that at the expense of everything looking, looking untidy and overgrown. So we put we had to end up having teams out on the A338 getting down weeds overnight um, and, and, and a number of other areas. So we are cutting grass. 
we are going to carry on and, and really positively behind, you know, the, bio, the biodiversity, ecology enhancements, wildflowers, you know, effectively. But we're not just going to do it um, as, as broad brush as, as, as the trial was last summer. We're going to targeted areas. Your um, your local councillor, Sean Gabriel, um, for instance, has, has been really engaged with us on, on this study. Um, uh, and I think it's, 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 I'm trying to remember one of the Facebook posts about it being a Marmite issue. Um, and, and that was that post as well received. So he's actually fed in, and I'm sure the other ward councillors um, have done as well um, in, in, in relation to you know, what areas need to be cut and that haven't. So we've gone back to ward councillors, we've gone back to the consultation and said, look, tell us where it hasn't worked last summer uh, and we cut, cut it more, but also that we need to be more positive about where we are going to keep it and we want wild meadows, that, that this is the reason we're doing it. So so simple answer to the question, Sally, is yes. Um, uh, right, okay um let me get some more questions so um i've got i've got a question about from Catherine avery about street cleaning i haven't got a detail in terms of you know francis Road and swivens this is 109 p.m southcote road it's looking pretty shabby right now so street cleaning absolutely does happen um uh, it will be happening in the roads that you, if, you know that, that you're talking about because what we've done is we've now we've done a we, we've, we've got done an audit across the conurbation um, and there are some areas, and I've mentioned this a few times before, like, like Christchurch, which had quite a, a lack of any provision on street cleaning. So we've immediately put extra um, street cleaning in uh, to, to, across the conurbation to make it uh, leveled up effectively. Um, uh, and, and now we're going, you know, going further and, and asking for higher standards. We put millions of extra pounds into the budget um, that we approved in February around cleaner, greener, safer. Um, and that includes, you know, um, street cleaning, it includes stuff like our town centre, uh, pilots where we're, where we're doing painting and removing and improving street furniture. So um, more money has gone. Thank you for the, for the um, Cleaner, Green and Safe. It's a really useful page if anybody wants to look and learn more about it. But, but Catherine, so um, effectively a lot more money is now going into uh, things like street cleaning. At no point in any area has that gone backwards. So if it was happening, it will be happening. Um, and in some places it wasn't happening and it now it will be happening uh, more frequently. So if there's a particular issue, again, feel very free to contact me um, and, and, and we can look into it for you specifically. Um, uh, but, but we are putting a lot more money and, and time into that now, Catherine. Um, OK, um, let me feed some more questions. OK. Thank you very much. Let me just see what we can, we can, uh, or oh, just lost them. Uh, okay, so Sandra Clay said on um, uh, 110, uh, on building more social housing, are you going to go outside of Paul, Paul Town Centre in the future? Uh, yeah, okay, so it, I think it's a really good, good point. There's an element, um, uh, quite a few things play into this. There's an element that, uh, what do I call it, you know, densification, um, uh, town centre densification is really important. Um, because uh, we're already a very um, a congested area. So, uh, you know, to reduce people's, you know, the, the impact of traffic uh, effectively. And there's an awful lot of research about, um, you know, well-being and happiness and it being around 15-minute cities. So when you can walk and do most of what you want to do within, within a 15-minute journey, get to work, shop, socialise, etc. So there's a lot of, st um, of studies that say it's really, it's really beneficial to um, uh, have more densification in town centres. That also means we can protect Greenbelt, which we're, we're, we're committed to do as much as possible. So, um, so, so effectively, first point of, of, of your, your question, we will be doing more, um, you know, looking for more, you know, densification and you know, quality uh, building uh, to deliver, you know, higher standards of well-being um, across the conurbation in, in our town centres. That doesn't mean um, and actually, as I said today, you know, the four, over fourteen hundred homes we've just approved to be uh, to be going ahead with, um, and a lot of those are pockets. You know, so three houses here, ten houses there, twenty houses there, effectively. So, so that will be across the conurbation. So, so yes, we we are committed to actually, um, you know, urban uh, you know densification and allowing more people to live in in, in town centres. Um, we are committed to protecting the green belt, but we still want to. Um, build where we can and deliver those family homes which are often built outside of the town centre um, and they're often on brownfield or, or infield plots as well so so we, we're just doing a lot more you know we're really raising the bar on building um, and and we you know um, so, so but, but lot in the town centre and where we can we can do it out you know infill in sites outside of the town town centre okay um let's see where we go um 
Okay, thank you. More comments on the on the um, the, the, the the town houses. Um, okay, let me try to answer. I've got more questions again coming in on the the, the council tax rebate. So perhaps I'll just I'll just touch back on that now because we've only got a few minutes a few minutes left. Um, so we've we've talked about you know so there is a one hundred and fifty pound rebate that's come from the government. We have to uh, distribute it out to out to people. Um, so we've got a uh, a link which we're, the guys will be putting up sh shortly. Um, so so we we have to get that money out by uh, by September. We we will get the money out quicker than that. Um, we're working on exactly how now. Um, it's a huge amount of work going into it. So please you know rather than me asking in answering individually questions on the rebate, if people could look at that. Um, that, that again, that'd be really, really helpful. Um, okay, Alison Bartlett, I've got you, I've, again, it, it's a question on, on, on housing 113. I'll just be really brief on this, Alison, um, it, because we talked about it. I think I've talked about how we're going to try and long term protect the Greenbelt by um, uh, putting our, 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 the housing where we can in, in, in town centres. Um, there are some, we've, we've just about, to, we, we've just started a consultation on the uh, options analysis on our, on our local plan. Um, so so we, we've had some really good feedback in from people. What we're going to do now is, is we will be taking that and then going out and doing a full consultation on, you know, put, put people's ideas and thoughts together and come forward with a, with a new local plan. Alison, that's the really key bit because what's in that local plan um, ultimately, if it's not in a local plan, it's very, very difficult for people to build uh, and, and develop around it. Um, so what we're going to do is to make sure that's in it. We have a commitment um, to protecting the green belt um, as, as and where we can. There are certain parts that we've inherited from previous uh, authorities where um, some green belt um, uh, developments were permitted, and I know particularly, you know, um, that there, there was one in Merley and there is, is one in Merley. So it's difficult. It, it, you know, we absolutely listen to feedback. The planning committee um, will we'll listen to feedback on individual applications. But the key thing going forward is getting that local plan right. That's why we brought in our future places team, who can absolutely give us a huge, you know, um, amount of insight into how to develop across the, uh, across the conurbation. So uh, we do listen to feedback. Um, historically, where where Greenbelt has been put in local plan as developable is difficult to change. So what's really important is when we bring a, a local plan for the whole conurbation, which we which we've just finished our um, uh, first consultation on, um, we will be able to you know, represent those views even more. So please look out for the um, for the local plan consultation, and everybody should engage with it if, if they can. We want to have a great vision for the area. We want to build, you know, homes for uh, homes for people, um, local people, young people, families. Um, but but we and but we want to do that whilst protecting the green belt and, and building on infill areas. Um, okay, so uh, we've got a question one fourteen. Um, uh, somebody Millwood, um, Harzai Zell Millwood. Um, also, who is responsible for enforcing 20, far, 20 mile per hour speed limits? Um, so enforcement um, is, is in and around. So you've effectively got the, 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 the police and you've got the, st the static cameras. Um, so so it's it's a, it's actually a mixture. Um, so if you're not, if you've got a twenty mile an hour speed limit and you're thinking people are going more more uh, regularly, please let us know. Again, in the first instance, very happy for that to be me. So drew.meller at bcbcouncil.gov.uk. Um, we can liaise with um, the, the, the police. We can help people set up community speed watches, which we've done really well in the past, where volunteers come in to effectively gather data, which is then then, then used back. Um, and we can then look, to, you know, and it's also we're, we're interested in a discussion on, on you know, more 20 mile an hour speed limits in, 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 in various places. So it's, it's all for us about listening to what the public want, feeding that back in, into the system and, and see if we can get that, get that working. Um, uh, a couple of questions about wh wh who do we go about funding, you know, in, in, the, in the first instance, just please e e email me, um, drew.manorbcbcouncil.gov.uk. I'm trying to speed up now because we've only got a, got a few minutes left. Um, uh, d d d yeah, I've, I've answered. I think I've answered Liz Arnold's question about uh, about more housing being built. Um, yeah, fine. P Penny Rogers, you know, I've, I've talked about toilets briefly. I'll just come back to that. One sixteen, Penny. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Um, we, we are putting more toilets in 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 town centres and leisure spaces for for uh, for everybody. You know, effectively. So we've just in the last month put two new toilets in into Hamworthy. Um, which has replaced, you know, uh, in, inadequate enclosed and, and uh, facilities. We put some, you know, several hundred thousand pounds last summer into the seafront to upgrade some of the toilets on the seafront. Um, and in Paul, we're doing a trial where we're actually putting three brand new 
you know, we were never there before toilets in and trialing a different type of toilet. Uh, and that's going to be going in, uh, in I believe, in the next six months, certainly in, in, in this uh, in this year. So um, and that's going to be if that works, that'd be great, because as part of our wider toilet strategy, we'll be able to roll them out quite quickly across the conurbation. So admittedly, a lot of our focus is going into pool at the moment um, uh, as a trial area. But there was a real mass need and, and, and pool toilets, more pool toilets had been closed historically. So it's actually about trying to trying to rectify that. OK, um, fine. You know, so, so Hayley, Hayley I, I just I'll just finish on a question from from Hayley Cuff. Um, what will happen to families that can you know, not afford to live, eat, heat homes, etc.? So um, I think it's a really important point. Um, you know, this is a very difficult time financially uh, for, for, for pretty much everybody in the world. Um, you know, really high inflation. We, we will be having a, a £150 council tax rebate that the government are funding, so we thank government for that. Um, we, we, I've, I flagged historically um, the, the use of uh, the, the WeFund, um, uh, part fund of the Citizens Advice Bureau uh, across BCP. So if anybody has got any uh, particular concerns or challenges or wants some more support, please, we, you know, we, we would really like to direct um, and thanks again for, for the details below on citizens advice direct people to, to that um, don't don't suffer in silence go let's ask some people let's get let's see what you know what help can be given um, these guys are great they really know what they're, they're, they're doing and they you know they're able to um, often often really help so please do 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 engage with that um, what we're doing as a council so for instance we, we were adamant we knew this was coming so we did a effectively a core council tax free so at least council tax we've got one of the lowest rises of council tax in the country over the last two uh, over the last two years it's 11 million pounds actually um uh, we haven't collected in the last two years of, of council tax because we feel we need to make sure that the council you know uh, our administration is saying that the council needs to be as efficient as possible because we can't keep going back to residents particularly at the moment uh, for, for more money so i'm really proud that we're doing something um but there's, there's more to be done and please go to citizens advice if anybody needs any further further support or help okay apologies we had an absolute flood of questions today i've only i've only got through uh, half of them it looks like um we will go back through the team will go back through and try and answer some uh so some, some extra ones as well um and we try and get them to again i've just flagged it up again i know i put it up five times today but um uh, if there's anything we haven't got and you are you, you want an answer to drew.mellor at bcpcouncil.gov.uk uh, and uh, we, we we will look into it and um and, and try and come back to you we're back in two weeks. Uh, we're back in two weeks. So, so hopefully really look forward to seeing you then. Um, uh, and, you know, thank everybody for their questions here. Um, I hope everybody stay, staying uh, uh, safe and well. And, um, yeah, very much look forward to being back. We, we're just about to um, talk about some of our more theme meetings. Um, so, you know, some of those deep and, and a lot of those suggestions have come in from the public. So thanks, everybody, for those. So we're going to try and alternate between a, a generic session like this and then, you know, some sessions where we actually deep dive on some other areas and give a bit more time up to, to the questions as well. So thank you, everybody. Really good to be with you again and look forward to seeing, seeing you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.